we have come to the end of this course and uh, last time we were talking about radiation theory. So, we will bring that to some conclusion today um, and then uh, we will uh, sort of summarize uh, whatever we have learnt in this course. So, if you recall this course has been primarily for understanding uh, the physical uh, implications and the mathematical uh, importance of uh, electromagnetic theory and uh, we have uh, introduced the concept of a vector and a scalar potential. So, last time what we are doing was to talk about a localized oscillating source and we had seen that uh, the uh, these are the general expression for the vector potential and the scalar potential corresponding to a current distribution and the and a charge distribution. And uh, so, what we said is that uh, the uh, if you have oscillating source, uh, we have uh, essentially um, fields going as e to the power i omega t and um, uh, we divide our region of interest into three. The first one is what we call as the near field, uh, where the dimensions of the source which is given by d here is much less than the distance from the source where we make the observation, which is still less than the wavelength of uh, the radiating field. There is an intermediate zone where we do not uh, do much, uh, because it requires lot more uh, rigorous uh, solutions, where this r is of the order of lambda and our main interest as we said is on the radiation zone, where uh, the uh, dimensions of the source is much less than the wavelength, which in turn is much less than the uh, distances at which we make our observation. And uh, we have seen that the uh, near field is quasi stationary. Uh, this statement is uh, understood in the following way that if you look at the field other than for the time variation like e to the power i omega t, the solutions will be the same as what you would get in case of static sources or steady currents. Uh, so, this is our near field and as we said we are interested primarily in the uh, radiation field for which d is much less than lambda, which in turn is much less than r. So, in other words r is the largest uh, scale in the problem. So, let us uh, say, uh, see we have been using vector x to represent x y z and let the unit vector corresponding to that be n and uh, the magnitude is x, uh, which uh, uh, we will also indicate as r occasionally that is the um, magnitude of the vector x will be taken as r. Now, if you do that then x minus x prime modulus, which we have seen can be written as x square which is r square plus x prime square. Remember prime is the, uh, the uh, variable corresponding to the source and minus 2 times uh, r times vector n uh, unit vector n multiplied with x prime and that uh, raised to the power half. So, if you expand this out, we had seen that this gave me r minus, uh, sorry, this is uh, not a vector, r minus uh, the unit vector n dotted with x prime. Uh, I also require, now this will as we know will appear as the uh, exponent of the exponential function and I have a 1 over x minus x prime there. Uh, which is essentially the same quantity, but with uh, raised to the power minus a half. And uh, what we had seen is that this is given by uh, 1 over r plus n dot x prime divided by r square uh, plus um, there are other terms like this, but uh, uh, we will not really be interested in these terms. Uh, these are higher order terms which are there. but just for 
to indicate. So, we write this down. Now, last time we had uh, uh, sort of seen what was the electric dipole approximation. So, just to recall for you uh, what we did is to put this quantity uh, as in the exponent. So, I have e to the power x minus x prime divided by x minus x prime. So, this was um, written as equal to or of the e to the power i k r by r. Then I have a 1 plus 1 by r minus i k times n dot x n dot x prime and uh, plus terms which we have said we neglect. Now, what we did last time is to ignore this term and replace e to the power x minus x prime by x minus x prime as e to the power i k r by r and that gave us the dipole approximation to the problem. The terms that we have here, uh, we will take this up and uh, these we will see give us two things. One is what is called as the magnetic dipole approximation and the next one which we will not really have much of a time to do is uh, essentially electric quadrupole approximation. So, let us uh, look at how does it go. So, the radius and field that I have got is, uh, so first I will uh, look at how this works out. So, my radiation field A, uh, the vector potential A of r or x, I use it interchangeably mu 0 over 4 pi e to the power i k r by r, this is just the first approximation integral j of x prime d cube x prime. This is the lowest order uh, approximation that we have got. Now, so what we need to do is this that notice one thing that if I now calculate uh, del dot of uh, x i times j. Now, we know that uh, uh, this is gradient of the scalar dotted with the vector. So, this is del x i as to why I am doing it will become obvious in a second del x i dotted with j um, vector, vector j. So, this is of course, a vector x i is the i th component of the vector x plus x i times del dot of j. Now, by equation of continuity, the second term I have got del dot of j. So, therefore, this is same as d rho by d t. And uh, since I have said that the variation with respect to time is e to the power minus i omega t. So, I get this as del gradient of x i dotted with j minus minus plus i omega x i times rho. And uh, uh, so, notice this, this is gradient of x i. So, since this is gradient of x i, so this is uh, uh, essentially um, i depending upon what i is. Um, this is just a unit vector in whichever direction i is and when it is dotted with j, i simply get a j i plus i omega uh, x i times rho. So, the reason why I am doing this is that if I look at this integral, uh, I have integral j of x prime uh, d cube x prime. Now, what I do is let us look at the i th component of this. So, this i th component of this, this is a d cube x. So, I will write this down as equal to the del dot of x i prime j d cube x prime minus i omega integral rho. So, basically what I am doing is I am replacing for this j i uh, 
del dot of x i j minus i uh, omega x i rho. So, this is uh, rho x i prime d cube x prime. Now, so this is this quantity of course, as expected by divergence theorem can be converted into a surface term and since I know my current is confined within a small region, the uh, as if I take this surface go to infinity, this term will drop out. And what I will be left with minus i omega rho x i prime d cube x prime, if you recall this is nothing but the definition of the dipole moment. Well, actually i a component on the dipole moment. So, this is what I have got from this j x prime integration. So, therefore, if I substitute this into the expression for a, I get a of x is equal to mu 0 by 4 pi as before e to the power i k r by r which was there uh, times uh, minus i omega p. So, minus i omega uh, p. So, this is what I get and uh, uh, if we could sort of use that omega by c is equal to k and this can be written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 uh, times uh, i k by c. Well, basically uh, omega is being written as c k and uh, then uh, um, mu 0 epsilon 0 is 1 over c square. So, this just uh, works out then I have got e to the power i k r by r times p. Now, this is incidentally just the dipole approximation. Uh, having got the vector uh, potential a, I calculate the magnetic field b uh, by simply working out what is del cross of this quantity. So, which is equal to minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 let's keep these terms i k by c which are common uh, which is constant uh, times del cross of uh, p uh, del cross of this quantity times p, but p is a dipole moment which is a fixed factor. So, therefore, what I get is gradient of e to the power i k r over r cross p. Now, this gradient is easily calculated. So, it is minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 i k by c. So, calculate this gradient e to the power i k r gives you a i k. Then uh, I have got uh, uh, I have to differentiate 1 over r. Uh, so, that I get 1 over r square actually minus 1 over r square. So, let me just take out e to the power i k r by r outside this times a unit vector r uh, cross p. This unit vector came from the gradient. So, this is my expression for uh, the uh, magnetic field b and uh, the corresponding uh, h field which is of course, simply obtained by dividing b by mu 0 and realizing that 1 over mu 0 epsilon 0 is c square. So, what I get is c k square by 4 pi e to the power i k r by r times 1 plus I have just changed the order of these two terms to take care of this minus sign i by k r times r cross p. So, this is the expression for the magnetic field. Now, I can uh, uh, obtain the uh, electric field by realizing that electric field is nothing but epsilon d by d t uh, sorry the epsilon d by d t is equal to del cross h. So, I can calculate the del cross h of this quantity and d by d t is minus i omega. So, therefore, using this I can get an expression for the uh, electric field as well. So, that is a rather long expression, but uh, here it is on the screen uh, this is uh, there is really nothing uh, that you need to do. Uh, what we realize is E is basically I c mu by k del cross of h and uh, this vector 
So, this is little complicated because it has a scalar, it has vectors, only p is a constant vector. So, you have to have the gradient of the scalar cross and things like that. So, if you do that, you get a huge expression like this. Now, at this stage, uh, let us let us look at for example, what is the radiation field like. Now, uh, I have uh, this is the electric field and I am sort of uh, looking at. So, these are the uh, final expressions for the electric and the magnetic field. I will just uh, put this screen for some time, so that you can have a look at how the algebra works out. I have actually sort of uh, in detail worked out uh, the whole thing. Okay. So, look at uh, that and um, so the final expression as we have seen is given by let me uh, write it down again is h equal to c k square by 4 pi e to the power i k r by r times 1 plus i by k r times unit vector r cross p and the electric field expression finally works out too, which I have not worked out here, but I have shown it how to do it e to the power i k r by r 4 pi epsilon 0 r. If you do it correctly, it will become k square unit vector r cross uh, p cross r minus i k by r 1 plus i by k r into 3 times r dot p uh, actually it is a unit vector r dot p minus uh, r dot p times unit vector r minus p. So, these are the two expressions that I have. Now, uh, let us look at uh, what are the points that are coming out of this expression. Firstly, you notice that the magnetic field is transverse to the direction of r perpendicular to the direction of r, but electric field has a longitudinal components because this is r cross r cross p or r cross p cross, cross r. Uh, both these fields E and B at large distances very large r go as 1 over r this is that 1 times this this is the major uh, field expression. Okay? And uh, this is also true of the electric field here, there is a i k by r. The at small distances, however, uh, the magnetic field is dominated by 1 over r square, which is this term, whereas the electric field is dominated by r cube term, and this is this term, there is a 1 over r there, i k by r there, and i by k r there. So, this is 1 over r cube, this is what dominates the electric field. So, therefore, uh, we write down uh, for the radiation zone where r is very large, I neglect this term which gives me a rather simple expression for uh, the magnetic field. So, in the radiation zone I get magnetic field h is equal to c k square by 4 pi e to the power i k r by r times unit vector r cross p. And if you look at the uh, same approximation, uh, you will find that the electric field can be written in terms of the magnetic field as c mu h cross r. So, this also tells you that the electric field is uh, perpendicular to the direction of uh, the magnetic field and the magnetic field is of course, uh, perpendicular to the direction of the uh, unit vector r. The once we have written these down, this is incidentally true only in the radiation approximation. Now, uh, that is 1 over r is the dominating factor for both electric field and the magnetic field. The uh, what we are interested in is how does the uh, emitted power go. If you remember, the, the emitted power is given by um, your uh, uh, average value of the pointing vector. So, since we are using complex quantities, so it is half of the real part of E cross H star uh, 
and uh, by plugging in these two expression, uh, remember that E is also written in terms of H. So, therefore, uh, E cross H star I will have 2 H there. So, I have to simply square this. So, if you plug this in, you are going to get uh, omega k c mu by 8 pi this times the real part of well e is given by h cross r and of course cross h star so uh, this quantity is well i have made probably some slight error there. What I have done is to write these numbers down earlier. So, it does not matter really. Okay. So, this uh, clearly because we have said the where the magnetic field is perpendicular direction of r. Um, so, therefore, uh, this would be in the direction of r itself. So, this quantity will be r uh, omega k c mu by 8 pi times h square and that is equal to uh, well r I have got a here I have got c k square there. So, I write this down. So, omega k whole square c mu divided by there was a 4 pi there there is a 8 pi there. So, I got 32 pi square 1 over r and 1 over r gives me 1 over r square and of course, r cross p whole square which is there uh, in the structure of the magnetic field. So, if you look at this, you find that this is given by unit vector r uh, omega k square c mu over 32 pi square 1 over r square r cross p. So, therefore, this gives me p times p square because this is square there times sin square theta. So, notice that the uh, pointing vector is uh, proportional to sin square theta and what we can do is we can find out how much is the power flowing through a unit solid angle uh, in the direction of theta phi. So, which is like uh, doing uh, simply uh, find out how much uh, d p by d omega this is the power is given by uh, well r square r dot the pointing vector and if you calculate this you get omega raise to the power 4 times mu divided by 32 pi square c times p square sin square theta. And if you want to calculate the total power that is emitted, you can simply integrate this over theta. You remember that there is no azimuthal dependence. So, you get a 2 pi there. You have a sin square theta sin theta d theta, which you can integrate out sin cube theta d theta. And so, you get omega fourth mu divided by 12 uh, pi c times p square. This is sin square theta has been uh, integrated out. So, if you look at now these two structures, you notice that uh, this is uh, the uh, vector p, the dipole moment vector p and uh, the, the way the power vector s is being uh, radiated that is symmetric with respect to uh, the direction of p and it is, this is where we are showing that at an angle theta uh, the uh, you know there is a solid angle d omega and the length uh, of the uh, you know if you join from here to uh, the uh, circumference then that would give you the magnitude of s. So, this is the way the radiation pattern looks like for a dipole it is perfectly symmetric about the direction of p. So, that was dipole approximation, where we uh, took the simplest possible uh, thing. So, let us look at the next approximation. Uh, the, in the next approximation, there are 
basically two terms. So, this is uh, I recall back a x is given by this expression and it is e to the power i k x minus x prime by x minus x prime. I had shown to leading order this gives you these terms. And so, as a result what we did till now is to take only ignore this factor and take only e to the power i k r by r and that, that gave us the electric dipole approximation. So, that was the dipole radiation field. Now, what we now want to do is to go over and take account of this term. I am not writing the full A x now, I am only writing the uh, term in A which corresponds to this. So, this is A x equal to mu 0 by 4 pi e to the power i k r by r, these are all there and I have 1 over r minus i k. Uh, well, I have once in a while uh, the uh, unit vector n is same as the magnitude of x. Uh, I have occasionally I have been writing it as unit vector r small r. So, this is the term which is in the my next order of approximation. The, the first term I have not written down that is the electric dipole term. So, let us let us write it down. So, I got a of x is equal to mu 0 by 4 pi e to the power i k r by r integral j x prime 1 over r minus i k n dot x prime d cube x prime. I, I will now do a bit of a uh, complicated algebra, uh, because this is a rather complicated expression, but, but nevertheless let us try to work this out. Notice the this term does not come into the integration at all, because it is independent of x prime. Uh, this is equal to mu 0 by 4 pi e to the power i k r by r 1 over r minus i k integral of j of x prime n dot x prime d q x prime. Okay. Notice this left hand side is a vector and the vector character comes from because this is scalar. So, vector character comes from j. So, let us look at uh, the component wise what, what do we get from this integration. In other words, let me look at let us say the uh, uh, you know I mean uh, what do I get for example, from the ith component or things like that. So, let us write down this expression here. Uh, well, I will for the moment skip this constant term. So, let me just plug it in here like this and uh, n dot x prime. What I can do is this that uh, uh, let me let me evaluate uh, instead of n dot x prime, let me take out uh, a 1 over r there. This is this part, so that let me call this star. So, this is the star there on the screen you can see the full expression uh, 1 over r integral j of x prime x dot x prime d cube x prime. Remind you once again that vector x is the position at which we are evaluating uh, the vector potential and x prime is of course, an integration variable. So, what we do is this that since we are interested in this part only, this part of the expression is given by uh, since it is x dot x prime which is uh, uh, summation over 3 components. So, let us call this sum over j equal to 1 to 3 integral j of x prime Well, x j times x prime of j d cube x prime. So, this is this is what uh, this part looks like. This is what we are interested in. The remaining part at this moment, uh, so far as 
the calculation of a of x is concerned, the remaining part remains unaltered. So, therefore, we will need it while calculating the magnetic field which will bring them at that time. So, let me then do this try to evaluate this quantity. So, let us look at what we are trying to do. So, we are trying to evaluate sum over j equal to 1 to 3 integral j of x prime remember j is a source quantity uh, x j x j prime d cube x prime. Okay. Now, before I do this, I want to do a subsidiary algebra. We know that if we took the divergence of the whole thing, supposing I wrote del dot of this quantity which is written there x j x j prime times capital J d q x prime using divergence theorem and extending the surface to infinity since j is localized I get this quantity to give me 0. Now, what we are trying to say is this if this is 0 this is del dot of a scalar times a vector. So, let us look at what it gives me. So, this tells me uh, gradient of a scalar. So, let us put gradient of x j x j prime uh, dotted with j the vector plus the scalar times x j x j prime times del dot of j. So, this quantity is equal to 0. Now, let us look at uh, what does this give me. Now, remember that this is gradient of a product of two things. So, therefore, the this gradient of x j x j prime is uh, given by um, well I did do a bit of a mess up, but let me sort of uh, uh, redo this. Uh, what I want to do is the following this is what I want to calculate, but instead what I want to say is this that let me just pull it aside let me pull it aside. Uh, so, this is the quantity which we are interested in calculating j equal to 1 to 3 integral j of x prime x j x j prime d cube x prime. So, what I am saying is this that consider divergence of x i prime x j prime j this is equal to 0 for because this is divergence means I can uh, make it a surface integral and j will vanish on the surface. And this del dot I have I know can be written as gradient of uh, well gradient of x i prime x j prime dotted with j plus x i prime x j prime del dot of j d q x prime is equal to 0. Now, this gradient that I have got I got gradient of x i prime x j prime is equal to uh, or dot with j. So, let us look at what does it give me. Firstly, I can take x j prime this is just a chain rule. So, I can take x j prime out I get gradient of x i prime dotted with j which is nothing but j i. So, uh, this is x j prime j i and like that when I take the uh, x i prime out gradient of x j prime dotted with j gives me j j. So, I get x i prime j j. So, if I now substitute it here I get integral uh, this is x i prime what I have got is this I get x i prime 
or rather x j prime j j x j prime j i plus x i prime j j and uh, if you remember that I had this term i omega rho prime the second term which I was not bothered about uh, x i prime this is this comes from the fact that I have got del dot of j uh, which is equal to minus d rho by d t and which goes as omega rho prime. So, therefore, I get i omega rho prime x i prime x j prime d cube x prime is equal to 0. Now, this is the expression which I have to evaluate j x prime x j x j prime sum over j equal to 1 to 3. Now, once I have said that this quantity is equal to 0, what I can do is to rewrite sum over j equal to 1 to 3 integral. Uh, suppose, I am talking about the ith component. So, I have got x i uh, j i x j x j prime. This is what I want to talk about and that is equal to sum over j equal to 1 to 3. Now, I bring the x j out and I have got j i x j prime d cube x prime. Now, this is where I use this identity that I had obtained. So, I had said x j prime j i okay? and so this is what I have got x j prime j i. So, I will write this as negative of these two terms which will go to the other side. So, this quantity will then be equal to uh, minus sum over j equal to 1 to 3 x j and integral of j i uh, rather j j x uh, i prime plus i omega rho prime x i prime x j prime t cube x prime. And this is the one which I will replace with that. What I now do is this, the, this is this is equal to this. So, I am going to do uh, take half of this expression and half of that expression, so that I write it in a slightly symmetric fashion. So, it is half of sum over j equal to 1 to 3, I get x j integral of j i x j prime minus j j sorry, x i prime minus i omega rho minus because there is an overall minus sign x i prime x j prime sorry there is a prime which was missing here d cube x prime. So, my expression is this and if I now want to integrate this out if you look at the screen this is what I had written it down. Now, no, notice this this term that I have got here j i x j prime minus j j x i prime. You notice this is nothing but the kth component of x prime cross j and of course, I need a uh, epsilon i j k because I do not know what whether i j k what is the natural order there. So, this will be minus epsilon i j k x prime cross j component k and the other one I have not done anything about. Now, if you now plug this sum over j equal to 1 to 3 x j and bring it inside and you notice that there is a epsilon i j k there with a minus sign there, minus sign I can bring it out. The this is nothing but x cross x prime cross j i component because this is jth component, this is kth component with epsilon i j k. So, therefore, it is x cross x prime cross j uh, ith component and the other term. Uh, other than this minus uh, uh, sign uh, which is there outside now I have taken down 
this is remained exactly the same. Okay. So, this is what we have proved so far, this is what we have proved so far, because uh, this is what I had and I just now showed that this uh, sum over j equal to 1, 2, 3, this is what we have proved there. And so, therefore, if you write this j vector j as i j i uh, x etcetera, then this is what you would get. This was i th component, so therefore, this is a vector relationship. Now, it is this term, it is this term which is my uh, magnetic dipole term and let us see why. So, this is what we have proved now. Uh, notice that the magnetic moment m, which we know is the current times the area vector and uh, the area vector can be written as half of uh, loop integral of r cross d l. And uh, if I take uh, i times d l, remember i is a current. So, i times d l is goes to if the current exists in a medium rather than in a wire, then i times d l is essentially j d v because i is j dot d s and this is d l. So, therefore, this definition of magnetic moment which is given by this can also be written as equal to half of r cross j d v. So, once I have done that, that this is r cross or x cross j. So, you notice this that what we are trying to say is here, I have got x cross x prime cross j and I have the integration of course, the remember the integration variables could be prime. And so, this term gives me minus x cross m. The, this is the magnetic moment term and this is the term which will give me the quadrupole moment term, but that we will see little later. So, therefore, if I want to now simply restrict myself to the magnetic field, to the magnetic dipole, then I need to only worry about this term. Uh, I bring back the constants that were there in the problem mu 0 by 4 pi e to the power i k r by r. 1 over r minus i k and integral j x prime n dot x prime d cube x prime and I write this because I have shown this integral to be given by n cross m. So, this is the complete expression for the magnetic field for the uh, magnetic vector potential. Now, from this my job is exactly the same as before. So, what I do is I write down uh, calculate the del cross of this a m, a m is magnetic dipole term, I have neglected all other terms. Uh, so, I calculate del cross m, uh, this is bit of an algebra, but let us go through this. The I have got mu 0 by 4 pi, this numbers n cross m, I want del cross of this quantity. So, first thing that I do is uh, realize that this is all scalar, i k I will take out because it does not really depend on anything. So, um, this is a scalar. So, I have got instead of dealing with n cross m, uh, let me uh, divide it by r and uh, write it as r cross m. And because I have divided by r and there is another r there, I have written as gradient of e to the power i k r, i k by r square, this r and that extra 1 over r that I have pulled out minus 1 over r cube into r cross m. This is what I have got. So, I got gradient of this quantity times this vector, uh, because I am calculating del cross. and So, therefore, uh, well actually it is del of this quantity cross r cross n, there is a cross missing here. And of course, uh, this quantity which is a scalar itself times del cross of r cross n. So, these are the two terms, there is a cross missing here. This gradient can be easily calculated. So, you can see it that e to the power i k r uh, take for example, this term. When you take the gradient of e to the power i k r, I get i k. So, this is i k e to the power i k r and of course, the same thing plus I keep e to the power i k r differentiate this, this gives me minus 2 by r cube because it is 1 over r square. This gives me minus 3 by r fourth, but there is a minus here. So, it is plus 3 by r fourth times this n cross r cross m, because it should be along the unit vector and this other term I have not disturbed it as yet. So, this is uh, this is the full expression, but then I should be able to uh, simplify them, just add them up properly, because 
there are similar terms coming out of here. There is a 1 over r cube term here, there is a 1, one over r cube term here, add them up properly, this gives you a 3. So, you notice that I would get uh, this. So, here I had got i k into i k is minus k square. So, I got minus k square by r minus 3 i k by r square and plus 3 by r cube which came from uh, there from this term. Okay? And, and this term which I said uh, is, is also there. Okay. Now, what I do is this, it is this second term which I am uh, simplifying del cross r cross m is del dot m r, this is the standard uh, vector algebra when you have del cross of two vectors, you get del dot the second vector r minus del dot r m etcetera etcetera. Notice that m is a constant vector, so this term is 0 and similarly, this term is also 0 because it is gradient of m. So, I am left with these two, del dot of r is known to be equal to 3 and this is m dot del r, you know what does it mean? It means you have to take the gradient of each one of the components and then dot it with the uh, i times one component plus j times the other component. So, that gives you just m because gradient of x for example, is 1. So, this gives me minus 3 m, this gives you plus m, so I get a minus 2 m. So, instead of del cross r cross m, put in a minus 2 m there and simplify these things further. So, if you do that, what you find is uh, like this, the this is your uh, h m and we have written this down, this is already n cross n cross m, simplify this and we have rewritten what these things are. And what I have done is this, I have uh, uh, simplified n cross n cross m using a cross b cross c, c formula, namely b a dot c minus c a dot b and I have written it in this fashion. Okay? And this is that term which I just now showed to be equal to minus 2 m. If you plug in all these things, you get e to the power i k r by 4 pi k square by r n cross m cross n plus this thing. Okay? The reason I am not really concentrating so much on these is I am mostly interested in the radiation zone where uh, only 1 over r terms becomes important. So, therefore, in the radiation approximation, uh, I am only interested in this term which goes as e to the power i k r by 4 pi k square by r n cross m cross n, this is in the radiation zone. The magnet, the electric field can be found by directly calculating del cross h or by uh, showing that this is equal to minus d a by d t, but, but basically the radiation zone, in the radiation zone, this is the expression for the uh, electric field. These are the, only the magnetic dipole term. Now, we do exactly what we did earlier, namely we calculate the pointing vector and calculate the total radiated power. So, if I do that, I find that this is the this is the radiation zone and this is the electric field in the radiation zone and the corresponding power expression works out to mu 0 c k to the power fourth divided by 12 uh, pi. Notice this omega to the power 4 dependence is very, very common uh, because k to the power fourth is also proportional to the omega to the power fourth, this times uh, m square. And, uh, the I have not drawn the power pattern, but uh, power pattern is very similar to the electric dipole pattern. I will not be talking about the electric quadrupole moment and that comes from this term, that comes from this term and you can see, I have not yet worked it out that the correspondingly the magnetic field expression can be written like this, where q i j is the quadrupole moment tensor and is given like this. The uh, quadrupole radiation pattern shows a maximum at angle equal to pi by 4 and this is the way the quadrupole moment uh, looks like. This is something which you, uh, you will do well to uh, take it as an exercise. So, uh, this is uh, basically what we um, want to talk about in the radiation, uh, basically talking about how the power uh, uh, you know is transported. Uh, the radiation zone is 1 over r and how much is the power which is uh, sent from the uh, uh, transmitting antenna and which is later on received by a receiving antenna.